Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are uh, joining our Jupiter orbiter, uh, already in orbit of Jupiter, as I have missed its um, node to adjust its orbit uh, ever so slightly. Oh, why is it throttle set to full? Oh no, it's not going to throttle back for... Oh, I... it's... okay. All right, good, we're set on the node. I can just use the H key and bump this periapsis up. Uh, I, I don't know what an appropriate periapsis would be, although it's telling me that's an orbit. I think we're gonna shoot for about a million kilometers. There we go, good enough. And then to prevent this from doing anything wonky, we're gonna shut off the fuel to the RCS system and just take a quick look at its orbit, which is massive. Yeah, look at how far out we have to go away from Jupiter to see its orbit. I think this is its uh, probably its second lap since making orbit a very long time ago. Uh, I would like to focus my view on Jupiter. Is that a thing? I guess not from this distance. Uh, no, I do not want to warp here. I, I will miss so many things. There we go. Focus Jupiter. Okay, um, about a million. <laughs> I don't know if that's outside of the atmosphere or not. I probably should have checked before I came out here to make any of these adjustments. Um, I guess I would also like to see, let's set that as a target. What is our total nodes about five degrees? That is by far the furthest one out. I just want to see how much delta V it would take to flatten out our trajectory in relation to the rest of the uh, Galilean moons here. Oh man, okay. And it looks like from that perspective quite a lot. Let's just take a look. Yeah. <laughs> 1400 meters per second to flatten out. I, I don't think we'll be doing that. I think what we will be doing, however, is lowering this orbit a bit. I don't know how much delta V we do have. I would say somewhere in that 400 range is pretty acceptable uh, as far as what I think we have. I'm not really sure I want to do that though because we may want some of this fuel to adjust orbit again in case we happen to encounter anything in our big slow spin. But all right, uh, that's gonna do it for our time here with the Jupiter probe. We're gonna go pick up our two Mars missions as it's time for their mid-course correction. So I will pick you guys up in just a second. Okay, so we are joining the uh, MCEL, the Mars Exploratory Lander. Um, about two minutes past when it was supposed to start this node, true to form. I have uh, zipped right past the node yet again. Okay, good, our engine is active. Stable, ignition. All right, we can come back off those RCS thrusters. Uh, I fidgeted with the node a little bit in uh, hopes that maybe we could just uh, aero capture at Mars. So I've set our periapsis uh, pretty low, something like uh, 30 kilometers or so. But uh, a lot of that is dependent entirely on this burn being done on time, which it has not been done. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, true to form. So, uh, we're just gonna probably, sp I don't even know if we need to speed through this burn. It's actually going pretty quickly. Uh, spacecraft is not that heavy now that it's uh, almost halfway out of fuel. And uh, even more so when we're done. But I just don't think that there's enough fuel left in this stage to capture without uh, using some of this heat shield. So I'm hoping to aero capture and then adjust the orbit with this engine. This has an, its own engine and its own fuel, so it should be able to deorbit itself if it needs to. So the primary concern after this is getting it into a stable orbit of Mars so that this can make its own uh, unassisted landing. Um, hopefully it will go as well as the Venus mission did, as to which this spacecraft is uh, based on. I mean, really, like, there's no changes except some 
to the parachutes, but that's about it. All right. Oh, wow, that burn went super quick. I was expecting to have to, like, time warp through it and not make you guys wait around, but it looks like coming up on shutdown. Oh, uh, yeah. Hit the key just a bit early. Great. Uh, this engine does have only two ignitions left. I'm not going to use one of them for six meters per second. I figure optimally there'll be one to achieve orbit and then one to stabilize said orbit. And then that'll be it. This, uh, this transfer stage will be done. It will have served its purpose and hopefully can just uh, rest and be used as a comms relay for anything else going to Mars, which hopefully will be lots of cool new stuff for lots of missions to come. Yep, yeah, and now we're already starting to play the game of Chase the Node. Come on. I mean, really, this is only like two meters per second. I should probably pop out to the map view and see exactly what this bought me. Mm. Well, <laughs> we've come so far, we might as well just finish it out, right? Uh, okay, 0 0.1 meters per second. Let's see where we're at. Oh, look at that. A collision course. I'll take it. Now, to uh, avoid anything going wonky, we're going to lock some fuel tanks. And, okay, good. I'm hoping all of these satellite tanks should be empty. Our RCS system should not be firing. Perfect. So now I don't have to worry about toggling the RCS off and waiting 15 minutes for it to realize what's going on. All right, I'm just going to take a quick step over here to alarm clock and add one for an SOI change in 122 short days. This mission will arrive at Mars. We will adjust its uh, periapsis and hopefully make a successful landing out of it. All right, now we've got one more course correction to make this episode, and it is for our other Mars mission. So I will pick all of you back up in just a second. Okay. <clears throat> and here we have Project AIR, the uh, Airborne Intermediate Range Explorer. That most definitely does need to aero capture Mars because this stage is soon to be useless. Uh, very stable ignition. Yeah, nearly 800 meters per second of correction burn required. I forgot to even check how much is left. Oh, God just a hair over enough. So we'll probably have just enough to correct whatever fudge-ups I make of this burn once it makes Mars SOI, and then that's it. Without an aero capture, this mission is all but junked. Um, <clears throat> of course, the aircraft itself has a little bit of fuel, it's got its own engines, but they were really designed so that it could kind of land in one biome, pick up some science, and then hopefully take off under its own power and sail to another one. But if we have to use it to deorbit, or at least some of it to deorbit, then we most certainly will. I'd rather put this thing on the ground and just have it sit there and look pretty than have it drift aimlessly in space like so many things destined for Saturn. So, <laughs> there's that. But, uh, I this bird is actually going a lot faster than I initially anticipated it would. I mean, I may have over... I thought this was going to be a very long burn, considering how much mass this thing has compared to uh, the M-cell lander, which is easily a th third of this. Maybe half, because it still has the heat shield and it needs a core for that too. Now, I'm not going to split hairs over it. It doesn't actually matter. But all we can really do is hope. Although, I, in retrospect, including any of this stuff was completely pointless because they're all on the other spacecraft, too. <laughs> I guess redundancy was what I was shooting for. All right. Only 1.4 meters per second off our target, although four minutes ahead of schedule is probably uh, gonna hurt more than I th 
think it is. Chase the node. Alright, that's good enough. Let's... Wow, that tank is empty. There we go. Let's toggle those off so we're not wasting fuel and see what that bought us. Oh, close, but not nearly close enough. What is a maneuver going to do inside Mars SOI to correct that into aerobrake territory? Uh, 40 some odd meters per second. What's in the budget? Currently nothing, of course. 100, okay. We have 100 meters per second to play with, 40 required for this node. About 115 days, and we'll set the alarm for SOI change. 115 days, 2 hours, 115 days, 16 hours. If we do it at the SOI change, it'll actually be a little bit more efficient because we're further out. Add alarm. There you have it. All right, well, so far so good. Both of our Mars missions, while under-fueled, are still on course. And, well, I guess we're going to learn how to aero capture real fast. <laughs> we learned how to do it at Venus. We can learn how to do it at Mars. But uh, that's going to do it for today's episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it. And I will see all of you tomorrow. Until then, see you later.